National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Gator Zone alongside Megan Parler, Jeff Cardozo here with you. Spring has certainly sprung, it is absolutely gorgeous, and school is out here at the University of Florida, but championships have already been won, and there's some more championships yet to be won, because those guys are still getting after it here on campus, and we are here at tennis to talk about a great regular season for the men's team. Yeah, Jeff, Brian Shelton's men's tennis team just crushed the SEC <laughs> this year. They went undefeated, did not drop a match, which is an insane feat. So they were the SEC champs this year in the regular season, did great in the SEC tournament that they hosted, and now it's time to host the NCAA tournament. Yeah, first time since 2005 the, uh, the men have won that. So great stuff there, and let's uh, let you look back on the great regular season. Here's Marshall. Twenty nineteen was a historic year for the Florida men's tennis team. Florida nabbed numerous titles with SEC Coach of the Year Brian Shelton, SEC Freshman of the Year Sam Riffis, and finally the SEC regular season championship. Let's take a look at how the pieces fell in place for this talented Florida team. The Gators started out by knocking off William & Mary and FAU in the ITA kickoff weekend event in Gainesville. The Gators then defeated UCF, FSU, and TCU. After a solid start, the Gators suffered their first loss to number 5 USC and number 10 Stanford. Little did they know, but that loss to Stanford would be their last loss for the next two months. Gators on three. One, two, three. Gators. The Gators moved into SEC play by beating Arkansas and Old Miss and then winning a heated match against number 10 Mississippi State. Next, the Gators had to face the defending national champions in the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. In front of a packed stadium, the Gators played one of their best matches and knocked off the number two ranked team. The Gators were on a roll. After picking up two SEC wins on the road against Georgia and Tennessee, the team returned home to defeat a talented Illinois team and top 10 Texas A&M squad. The Gators cruised through the rest of the SEC regular season and went into senior day with a chance at winning the SEC regular season outright with a win over South Carolina. On a beautiful Sunday afternoon, surrounded by family, friends, and fans, the Gators won their first SEC regular season title since 2003. During the regular season, the Gators went on a magical run and won 15 straight matches and didn't drop more than two points in any of those matches. In SEC play, the Gators put up a 62-10 singles record and finished the regular season 15-2 against top 50 opponents. After an incredible regular season, the Gators looked to top it off with an SEC tournament title. In the quarterfinals, the Gators dominated the Crimson Tide. but ultimately fell short to Tennessee in the semifinals. Although this was their first loss in 16 matches, the Gators are not done yet. With the NCAA tournament just around the corner, Coach Brian Shelton looks to get his guys ready to get them. When you put it all out on the line and you work hard for things, um, and you, and you don't get them, you're going to be disappointed. You know, given that everything we've got, we've had a great run so far this season. We've got a lot to be thankful for and to be proud of, but I know that we will bounce back. We've got an amazing group of guys in that locker room. Um, the best is yet to come. Take a couple of days, let's regroup a little bit, and let's double our effort. 
go back to work. Let's finish this thing as strong as we possibly can. For Gator Zone, I'm Marshall Moyle. Well, Jeff, you see Brian Sheldon at the end of that feature. They were a little mad with how they sure. ended the SEC tournament at home. So, just fuels them to be even better and prove how good they are in this NCAA tournament. Well, that just means a little more practice. And uh, guess what? Practice is starting. So, let's get the heck out of here. We are uh, going to track. Be right back. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everyone, Jeff and I now hanging out at the Percy Beard track. We're talking about a unique athlete who is a two-score athlete, walked onto the basketball team in 2015, was doing track as well because of his ups, mm -hmm. and then got injured. But Mouse Holloway is uh, really proud of the way he's responded from that injury because right now, Johnny Victor is killing it. He has been phenomenal now in his senior season. And I guess you think of Johnny and Victor, I think of Johnny Drama from Entourage who always yelled, victory! <laughs> so let's uh, hear more about Johnny Victor. Johnny Victor was an all-county wide receiver in high school. He played basketball as well. But his best sport didn't even require a ball. When his hoops coach made the whole team either run cross country or participate in track and field, Victor realized his ability in the high jump was special. Even still, after accepting a scholarship to jump two hours from his hometown of Orlando at UF, he wanted to remain a multi-sport athlete. I always wanted to play college basketball uh, coming out of high school. So with that opportunity when I came here, I figured you know, I'd reach out to the basketball team and see if I could you know, try out and walk on to the team. And I spoke to Coach Holloway about it, and you know, both parties are good with it, so that's how it worked out. Johnny has always been the guy that thinks he can do a lot of things. He's very, very athletic. He has always had a lot of confidence in himself, which is, which is great, you know, played basketball for a year and still thinks that he can go to nationals and be an ultimate competitor and, you know, later in life go on and do other sports or do something else athletic. He's, he believes that, and I absolutely believe he can as well. But that dream of playing two sports in college ended during his first season of jumping. In fact, his athletic career altogether was in question. Victor suffered a gruesome leg injury in March of 2016 during a jump attempt. Sports would quickly become an afterthought. He just hoped to return to a normal life. You know, I thought my career was over, to be honest, when it, when it happened. It was disgusting. An injury like that is sometime career ending. I was just blank at that point, you know. I was like, I didn't know what was going to happen from there. You know, my mom finding out, I didn't know how she was going to react to it. It was hard just to think about my future and everything. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen next. It, it was tough. Mentally, you know, just not being able to, you know, walk around, having to hold crutches. I couldn't shower my, by myself. Like, it was, it was tough. He never returned to the court, but he did get to compete again in the sport that made him a Gator in the first place. According to his doctor, the optics of the injury were worse than the injury itself, and it was still possible for athletics to be a part of Johnny's life. He got better than he was before the injury, which is crazy. He's an ultimate competitor, and once he realizes that it's going to be okay, he was fine, and, you know, okay, like, I can practice, I'm good, and meets, he just goes and competes really hard. If I was to get hurt, and hurt uh, that bad, I don't know that I'd be able to bounce back like he did. He definitely came back harder, stronger, better, faster. To come back from an injury three years ago, fight back, and then score points at an outdoor meet, to come back to another indoor meet and score another big point, and then, you know, getting ready and shaping up for this outdoor season, I feel like he, he'll have something remarkable and special to do. Regardless of how he finishes, this will be Johnny's final season in the orange and blue. He could very well finish his outdoor career just like he did his indoor a key contributor to a national championship team. He just he gets to meets and he believes that he is better or just as good as all the rest of the people where everybody counts him out. And by him believing that and getting in competitions and just being really good that we all know that Johnny's going to get to a national meet and figure out a way to score even when he's ranked 23rd or 15th or 12th, like he's going to figure out a way to be really good that day. It's like I don't even go into meets, you know, thinking about what I'm a place and stuff. I just go out and jump. That's what I always tell myself, just jump. You know, I, I know what I'm capable of and that's what I do. And I've just been progressing every every year. So like when I go out there at meets now, my confidence is like through the roof, you know? So I just know I, I could do it and jump high. For Gator Zone, I'm JT Santos. 
Well, Jeff, next up for the track programs is heading to Fayetteville, Arkansas for the SEC Outdoor Championship. So I'm sure Johnny will do his best in the high jump to help the men's team bring home yet another SEC championship. Yeah, they were awesome indoor, winning a national mm -hmm. title. So uh, let's hope they can do it in the outdoor field as well. Well, we're going indoors next. We'll take a break, come back, and you'll see where we're at. Gymnastics. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everybody, welcome back to Gator Zone. Megan, Jeff here with you now in gymnastics. And if you go into the O-Dome, you know that gymnastics is one of the most exciting things here at the University of Florida. 10,000 people yelling, screaming, and doing the Gator Chomp. And uh, our next student athlete got to do that for many, many years. Battled some injuries, but was really good on this thing and really good on the vault as well. Yeah, Jeff, Amanda Chaney is a diehard Gator. Her family are the biggest Gator fans. They went here, and her being a Gator was just one of the best experiences for the family. So her doing balance beam and vault and coming back after her junior year, she just did amazing things. So here's Shelby with her story. For senior Amanda Cheney, it's been all orange and blue since day one. Both my parents met here and they brought me home from the hospital in a gator onesie and I think that's just where it all started. <laughs> the Cheney family often made the trip to Gainesville from Orlando to cheer on the gators. And 13 years ago, Amanda walked away with a souvenir that ended up inspiring her gymnastics career. I was given my, a Gator gymnastics poster back in 2006 with the whole team on it and I remember hanging up in my room and just wishing and dreaming and like I want to be on that poster one day, I want to be on that poster one day. Over the next 10 years, Amanda worked hard in the gym and in the classroom so she could reach her goals. And of course, other schools noticed that as well. But thanks to Rhonda Fain, Cheney's dream of being a Gator gymnast became a reality. In the back of my head, I always knew I wanted to be a Gator. I knew that's what I wanted to do, but of course I had all these other coaches talking to me and recruiting me, so I like to say I was very open, but um, I think just in the back of my mind, I knew I wanted to be a Gator. And I just remember Rhonda saying on my visit, like, we know you have a lot of other options, but we would love for you to be a Gator. And that was just my immediate, like, all right, yep, that seals the deal. Like, that's all I needed to know. Cheney competed a handful of times her first two years in orange and blue. But then her trust in the process was put to the test when her junior season started. Even though Cheney was sidelined with a knee injury, she had to keep her faith for her team. My junior year when I had my knee injury, that was super hard. I think that was one of my like lowest points of probably my life, my career. Just because I had had such a great um, preseason that year and I really thought like, okay, this is like my year to really have fun and show what I'm capable of. And I just really felt like good health-wise, physical-wise, like mentally-wise, I just really felt really strong. And to have one freak accident like on one random day was crazy. But um, in the end, I think I learned so much my junior year that really helped me this past senior year. I don't think I would have had as successful of a senior year if I didn't learn all the lessons I did having to sit on the sideline. These last four years weren't easy for Amanda Cheney, but no matter what happened on Friday nights, she was one of the best teammates and leaders for this team. She is the gymnast that will come into the gym and have your back every single day. You know, she'll be having the worst day or the best day and she's still there for you and she knows the exact thing that you need to hear. She'll be in your ear telling you and you know, cheering you on. She's literally your biggest cheerleader. Having to sit and or be alternate or not even one or the other, you don't know if you're gonna be in or not, that me is, is tough. Like it's definitely tough and it's very humbling. And just my junior year, I finally realized that I'm not defined by a score or by a placement or a routine or anything. I am just myself and totally comfortable in my own skin. It all it takes is one person to throw off the energy in the gym. And for her to be one of those, you know, lights in the gym that, you know, that's always on, you know, never even flickering, it was definitely huge and it helps the team a lot. In 2006, this young gymnast hung up a poster of her role models. And now, 13 years later, she's the one who is the inspiration. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Granath.
Well, thanks so much, Shelby. And Jeff, we always talk about how amazing our student athletes mm -hmm. are giving back to the community. And the gymnastics team, no different. They've adopted a little girl from Friends of Jacqueline and are always giving back. And the softball team, no different. It's so rewarding as a student athlete to interact with the fans and meet people from all over the country because there are mm -hmm. Gator fans everywhere. And one from uh, across the country got to Gainesville because she wanted to see a Florida softball weekend. And the softball team was awesome when they played Arkansas, all because of this wish. Before the Gators took the field against Arkansas for an important SEC regular season series, they took some time for an even more important mission, giving hope. Florida softball hosted Ariana Whip, a 17-year-old Gator fan from South Dakota making her first trip to the Sunshine State. Though she doesn't live anywhere near KSP Stadium, she knew early on the Gators were her team. A couple years ago when I saw you guys on TV, the great, like their personalities and their team and all that, I decided I wanted to come here to play softball and be a part of it. Um, it was, I don't remember the exact year, but it was when the Florida Gators played um, Nebraska Huskers. Um, she just kind of made her own choice that she, the Florida Gators was her softball team and she wanted to come here for college and try to hopefully one day play softball here and it was something she did herself. Ariana's dreams weren't that different from most other kids play the sport she loved at her dream school. But Ariana wasn't exactly like most other kids. When mom was pregnant with me, they found out at 20 weeks that I had a heart defect, which is called tricuspid atresia. Ariana had two open heart surgeries, one at six months and then one at 19 months. And we traveled to and from Omaha Children's Hospital, which is about nine hours from where we live. It's where my tricuspid valve didn't form and I have one pumping chamber instead of two. My blood kind of just spills into my body instead of getting pumped into the body. And that causes it to push back into my liver. It's a heart disease that um, she can still go on every day with, but it, she does have limitations. When it's hot outside, Ariana can't really be outside. It, it's just too much. Her insides just kind of can't keep up with her. Uh, the older she gets, the more testing she'll get just because her body's growing, but um, every time we go to the doctor, they always say that she is a miracle. Tricuspid atresia has radically impacted Ariana's life, including taking away her favorite sport of softball. I've been playing since I was five, and then I had to quit when I was 14 due to illnesses. But her condition also got her in connection with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and she knew exactly what wish to make. Back in December, we knew Ariana was gonna be granted to make a wish. Um, they had her write her own letter, so it was nothing that me or my husband were a part of. Um, she wrote it and read it to the Make-A-Wish people, and she everything was about the Florida Gators, her favorite softball team, who she wanted to meet. And then when they finally got the phone call and said, oh, you guys leave in four days, was kind of nerve-wracking, but it was, it was the best phone call I think we could have got to see Ariana's face light up. And the hardest part about the thing, though, was we got the phone call, and then we were told we couldn't tell her. So trying to keep that a secret, and she's talking about how they have finals in school, and I'm like, oh, how do I keep this a secret? It worked out perfect because her birthday was Saturday. The announcement was Sunday, so we just said we were going for ice cream, and her Make-A-Wish team was there, as well as friends and families. And Oh, she didn't even know what was going on. She like walked in, oh, you're here, you're here. Didn't even see the Make-A-Wish people in there. Um, we, we all sang Happy Birthday, and then after that Happy Birthday song, they announced she would be the um, honorary player for the Florida Gators, and that, that spiced her up a little bit as well. Ariana's wish not only brought her to Florida to meet the Gators, it reintroduced her to a sport she loved but feared was gone for her. When I stopped playing, I haven't really gone back to softball because it kind of still hurts not being able to play. And then being able to step back onto the dugout and into the field for the first time in two years felt amazing. I was amazing. Uh, definitely tears of, of happiness to just watch her face light up and to spark something in her that me and her dad haven't seen for a while. It was nice. Ariana's condition tried to slow her down, but she refuses to be defined by what she can't do. Um, this has stopped me from some sports and some things day to day, but I kind of just forget about it and be normal and push myself to the limit 
and when others say, no, you can't do that, I kind of prove them wrong and still do it and just go until I can anymore. I kind of just don't let it get to me. I wake up every day knowing my limitations, but yet still push myself and kind of just go day by day. Inspired by Ariana's courage, the Gators would go on to sweep the Razorbacks in the series. But more importantly, they helped make Ariana's wish come true. For Gator Zone, I'm Joe Prozac. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for sharing that story, and I got to hang out that day, too. And what a great time it was for that family. And Ariana was so well-spoken and so brave in what she's going through right now. And it was it was a great day altogether for well, her and yeah. the softball team. And to meet Kelly Barnhill, more strikeouts yeah. than anybody in the history of this program had to be a, a really cool experience. Well, it's really cool for us to get to do some top plays, so we do that next. Welcome back to Gator Zone. So we have top plays and there's so many great things that happen on the field on the court whatever it might be and heck a lot happen in this building in exact tech arena but maybe the uh, the biggest most coolest top play of all time is graduating getting that diploma from the University of Florida and so many student athletes have done that so shout out to all of you congratulations <laughs> but some are still making yeah. some top plays so here's your week in top plays today's top plays are brought to you by Nike Burger jam shot to first. Matthews comes home. Now a pickle for Robinson. Lindemann shovels on to side post. Still no tag yet. The tag is applied. And now caught up in a pickle is Heimberger. Reynoso lays down the tag. My goodness, a double play. It was an emotional loss for the Florida Gators as Heimberger lines it towards center. Falls in on a head first dive. Makes the play. What a play by Voss. Here's Montana Davidson. Line drive towards left center. Caraway makes the diving grab. The throw to second, not in time. So Caraway picks up Voss. A little web gem of her own. Outfield just having some fun out there right now. So there you have it, some top plays, and we appreciate all of you tuning in to another episode of Gator Zone. Again, school is out. School's out. It's a good song. <laughs> but still plenty of uh, athletics going on here at the University of Florida, so follow them all these ways. Yep, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat all season long. You gotta get in that Snapchat. You I'm gotta get cool on Snapchat, you right? Doing that, but you all are cool for watching us. We appreciate it, and we'll do it again soon for Megan Parler. And cameraman Gareth Gutierrez, I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you next time.